Indoor track is off and running last weekend. Uh, Dort had the invite, Nebraska had an invite, Doan had an invite, so they're heading it hard uh, this time of year. We will be back at the Nebraska Bob Devaney Center this year for our GPAC Indoor Track and Field Championship, so we're uh, excited to work with them. I think it's the fifth straight year now that we've been with UNL. A little bit different this year. We can only get it for um, not all the day on Saturday, so we're going to start at 2 and we're going to go until about 10, a little bit later than we'd like to, but we thought it was important to keep it in the Devaney. Uh, because, uh, quite honestly, I don't know we have another facility in the league that can hold it uh, with, with the crowds. We get really good crowds for that. Um, a long-time event administrator there um, came up to me and he goes, don't tell anybody I said this, but I think you outdraw the Big 12. <laughs> when we had the Big 12 here, and it was probably not the Big 10. Uh, they had the Big 10 there last year. That was pretty big, but uh, it was, don't you dare say anything about it. Your secret's safe with me. But that was pretty neat to hear from the guy at Nebraska to say, you know, this GPAC, the GPEC indoor track is pretty awesome, and uh, that people come out and watch it. So we look forward to a, a fast season there. February 16th, the finals are ready, but it'll be a fun season. And then wrestling for our winter sports is in full swing. Uh, we do duels only now in the conference. We did drop our conference tournament because we still have qualifiers in the NAIA, and that's pretty much all of our teams. So we don't re uh, repeat week after week for that. <coughs> so uh, they're going right now. Midland last night was a winner uh, in their duel against Briar Cliff. Uh, just early action, but. Midland is kind of the team, I think, right now that people are looking at. They were seventh in the uh, Cliff Keen National Duels over the weekend. Morningside has won the league the last couple of years, so I would imagine it'll come down to those two uh, down the stretch run in wrestling. Spring is coming. I talked to Andy this morning. He's pretty excited. He was going to play what he called uh, parking lot ball today. I like that. Uh, <laughs> 50 degrees, you go where you can go, and so they're going to head out. I said the ducks are on the pond down there, so they might as well get out and start playing. Um, but uh, it, it'll be nice for them to get out and hit some fly balls today and enjoy it because it'll change probably by next week. But uh, baseball and softball will be here before we know it. Um, you know, I, it's, since I've been here last, uh, Mount Marty won the GPAC baseball tournament which was fun last spring at uh, Haymarket Park, another agreement with Nebraska last year that we had uh, where we could play there. We will not play there this year because the Huskers are home, but we're hoping to go back there next year. So hoping to put that back on the books. We did that with the Lincoln Convention and Visitors Bureau. They helped us out in that regard, and that was great for, for our conference. Um, just want to hit on a couple honors within the league. Morningside was our all-sports trophy winner last year. Of course, we're right in the middle of that right now. And Nebraska Wesleyan is the reigning uh, Mervyn Christofferson Academic Award winner. Uh, of course, Mount Marty has won that, uh, I believe, three times in school history. So, and, and is right there in the top three every year. Do a great job uh, with that as well. And those are a couple of our major awards within the GPAC. Is Morningside your biggest school? No, I would say probably, what do you think, Joey? I think Nebraska Wesleyan probably would be the biggest. Um, uh, uh, they'd be right in there, though. Um, I, Nebraska Wesleyan has a lot, well, it depends if you're talking on, on campus traditional or non traditional commuter, because I think Nebraska Wesleyan would have a pretty sizable lead there, around 1,400. Um, but you know, Morningside's around 12, 1150. Concordia's up there, too, yeah. The status of Midland, we've heard they were a little bit shaky. Well, you know, they've uh, they've come through some tough times. There's no question uh, when Dana closed, they, they got a, a, a resurgence of students, which helped them out a lot. Um, their president is Ben Sass. He's a, a, a Fremont native. Uh, his dad was pretty well known in Fremont. He's done a good job of, um, of uh, mending some things in the town to try to get them back on solid footing. But uh, it's a tough road. You know, they got a few years ahead of them where they're going to have to work hard at it. but. You know, they're, uh, they're doing some nice things. They're really growing rosters. They're trying to get, um, you know, they're, they're building athletic teams. They're adding, I think they're our only team that's adding a rifle. Uh, they're going to add some rifle in there. They've got bowling. Um, I know that we have archery here in town. You know, those, those are the things that schools are turning to just to draw more kids, you know, uh, and along with the sports that we traditionally think of, the 19 that we offer within the conference. Corey, what about, um, explain the voting for, you know, the top 32 and, uh, to make the national tournament and so on, who's okay. doing the voting. And, and for basketball? Kind of, yeah, for basketball, how okay. that all kind of works. Uh, every league has a voter in basketball. Um, it's a coach from every league. Uh, so in Division Two and Division One are separate in basketball. It's the only two divisions in the NAIA. So they each submit a ballot every week. Um, to make the national tournament, each conference, if they have over six, is guaranteed one berth automatically. If they have over 10 in basketball, they are guaranteed two berths from that league. So the GPAC would be a two in basketball. 
uh, because we have 11 NAI playing schools. Beyond that, that usually fills up uh, right at 21 of the spots, 21 to 22, maybe up to 23, depending on the year. And then the rest of them go to at-large, and that goes into the ratings uh, based on that final poll after the conference tournament, and you just start going down and crossing them off. You, you, you just take them in there and, uh, and uh, you get down. It, it's gotten down to 24, 25, even receiving votes now in the last couple of years. Some years that number go, that goes up into the 22s, but that's, uh, that's our version of the bubble uh, right there. And uh, you talk about the NCAA March Madness bubble and kind of the same in the NAI. You watch that poll very tightly. And getting, getting into the poll now is kind of where you want to be because you've got to make that move by the uh, middle of February. Back there, yeah. What about league expansion, Florida State or York or yep. uh, League expansion is not on the uh, horizon right now. Um, we have a standing committee within our presidents that uh, we do continue to visit about it, although they have not talked much in the last year. Um, we have not had any uh, applications now for two years. Uh, we are very committed to our current 11. Uh, we, we feel like we have a really good group right now, uh, very tight-knit. Um, we talked about what that magical number is. You know, I think ideally 12 is, the, is, is maybe a little more of an ideal number, but 11 is very functional. Um, we can do some creative things with 11. It allows us for double round robin basketball, for example. And, we still get uh, 20 doubleheader games in baseball and softball, which is a sizable portion of their schedule. So, because uh, you're allowed, um, you know, you're allowed only a certain amount of games anyway. So we're in a good size league. So we feel comfortable with that. But we, we keep we keep our eye on it. It's important. Uh, you got to keep your eye around you. I think now that the the northern schools have maybe broken off and started talking amongst themselves again, we probably aren't seeing that push down from like a Dakota State that we had in the past. Uh, you know, they went the independent route last year and have now quickly decided they need to get back into a conference. And so uh, they're going to work towards that with that group back up there. And that's kind of their group. That's kind of who they run with and uh, hoping that they can pull that off. Well, you had a group, though, in North Dakota. Who's, who's that? The Jamestown and Allendale? And Jamestown, Mayville. Um, uh, Dakota Allendale. State, not up. Uh, uh, Valley City. City. Minot is D2. Minot went D2. See, Dickinson <coughs> went over to the frontier. Conference. They went west, and uh, they're very outlier in the Frontier Conference. And they're 24 and a half hours from their furthest opponent in that conference in football. That's Eastern Oregon. Uh, they don't Eastern plays in the Cascade for other sports, but so sizable travel for Dickinson out there in the in the western part of Montana.